Chapter 1 of The Forgotten Game by Joshua French. This chapter is called Remembering the Game. Now, I used to take life really quite seriously and I look around me at other people and I see quite a lot of people taking life seriously as well. Mostly adults, I must say. Children, interestingly enough, often seem to naturally just want to play and could spend hours and hours just playing, just playing, just having fun for the sake of having fun. Interesting that. It's almost like before they came into this world, they knew that it was all a game. And then it wasn't until they got a bit, a bit older and they started to be educated by teachers and their parents and by the media and by everyone else that actually life was a serious thing. You've got to tick off quite a few things and if you don't then you're a failure. You've got to get married, you've got to have kids, you've got to get a good job, you've got to make a lot of money and pass it down um, to your kids when you die. Um, or it, it may be a different thing that people take seriously. Maybe they're not so attached to all that sort of stuff, but then they're very attached to being the master at their particular art form or something like that. Or they want to be famous. That's really important to get that recognition. Um, the rich thing is, is, is very common. People want to be rich. And also for me, um, as well as bits of, of some of those, for me, I took getting enlightened really seriously. Like, if I was meditating and my mind was being too active, then I would be really annoyed because this was a serious thing. I had to calm my mind. I had to raise above the ordinariness of this. I, I had to achieve enlightenment. And really, what happened was um, lots of different things. But I was in St Andrews and I'd gone to visit my mum who was working there. And um, I had a day off and I was sat having a soup outside a cafe. I think there was a little harbour. I don't really remember that, but I do remember the boat that moved past. And as I watched this boat moving past, I just suddenly had this clear, clear insight that I was inside a virtual world and that wasn't real. It was like a simulation. And I was not scared by this. I was thrilled. The whole world seemed like such a wonderful playground to explore because it was this, this, this created thing that was there for me, the player, to explore. And everything seemed so vivid. Just the details of, of the sunshine on the water or the taste of the soup, everything was so amazing. Now this powerful feeling didn't last, but it gave me the idea for The Forgotten Game and uh, then I started working on a website and did some videos about it. And since then, it's been this underlying thing for me and I'm not saying it's easy, I'm not always joyful and playful, but generally, I'm much more playful and joyful than I used to be. Because I realised that the game is easily playable. How? Perhaps you're asking, how, how, how can I play this game? This is what you do. Drum roll. Good drums. You find something to enjoy about this moment, now, right now. I'll play it with you. Okay, so I'm enjoying the peace in this room. I'm enjoying the warmth. I'm enjoying feeling comfortable. I'm enjoying talking, the act of talking. And if you can do that, then you've already started to play the game. Because a game is characterised by the fact you enjoy it. So if you can enjoy that moment, and then the next moment, and then the next moment, you are playing the game of life, and it's as simple as that. 
wow, can it be that simple? If you're already starting to have those doubts and difficulties, then you can go in a bit to look at chapter 2, which is doubts and difficulties. But here's how it can work. I'm going to give you an example of a day of playing this game. So I get out of bed, and as I get out of bed, I enjoy the warmth of the bed, I enjoy the comfort, I maybe enjoy the feeling of breathing, enjoy stretching, and then walk out of bed, enjoy the feeling of movement, get into the shower, enjoy the warmth of the water and the smell of the of the shower gel and of course thoughts will come in and start to say oh but you should be doing this you should be doing this today's going to be a bad day because you've got this to do and it's quite stressful but you can just train yourself habitually to enjoy this to enjoy this to enjoy this and there's always so many things to choose from even the absence of something like the absence of pain when we have pain we always notice it but when we don't have pain we very rarely appreciate that. The absence of illness, the absence of hunger, the absence of thirst. And then there's lots of things, um, you know, warmth, a beautiful thing to look at. Being in the presence of somebody, having nothing to do just for, just for a little moment. Exercise, the feeling that that gives you. Oh, the, the list is endless. There's so many, there's so many things that you could choose from the grand buffet that is each moment. You might not want to focus on that or choose that in the buffet, but you don't have to. You just choose something that you do enjoy. And if you can't enjoy, then at least accept. If you're stuck in the rain and your car's broken down and you're flagging down, a taxi or something, I don't know, a really difficult situation to enjoy. At least enjoy the anticipation of it being over and just accept. Just accept. And when you accept, suddenly it becomes a lot easier to enjoy the next moment because you're not resisting. And that is really as simple as it gets. And I honestly tell you it's possible. By enjoying this moment and the next moment and the next moment and the next moment, you start to build up momentum and it just starts to become a habit and it starts to become easier. And sometimes, admittedly, you think, oh, I can't be bothered to play this game anymore. And what you do then is go, okay, I don't, I don't have to. And you're enjoying the feeling of relief that you don't have to play the game anymore and then you're still playing the game because you're still enjoying yourself because the whole point is that at any moment you're not resisting what is, but you're accepting it which very quickly moves into enjoying it. And if you can enjoy it straight away, then even better. Now, what happens when you start to accept and enjoy the present moment? Well, two friendly impulses arise. Intuition and inspiration. Intuition, just like this guiding thing. If you do this, then it will be good. If you do this, then you'll have even more fun. If you do this, then you'll feel great. It's the right thing to do at that moment. And inspiration as well, like a jolt from above. Ha! Huh, I've got this idea. You know, they're really very similar. Ideas and guidance and all of this. But when you start to get happier and enjoy the game of life more and start to follow these things, these impulses, then you realise that the game gets even better, even more fun, and even more exciting. Life is such an adventure. So that's basically the forgotten game. I'm going to go into more detail in the other chapters about tips if you're finding it difficult answering questions that you might have about how it can't be that easy and also about ways to, or benefits, that's what I was going to say, benefits 
the reasons why it's so good to act like this. And also about research that says that maybe life is just a simulation and in that respect it's our choice, we can just enjoy it. And what else? The characters we play within this simulation and some other games as well. Right, they're the different chapters, but chapter two is Doubts and Difficulties. And that's the one I will do next. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Because...